Bom dia a todos. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Paulo Guedes, Dr. Paulo Guedes Minister of the Economy, Ambassador Norberto Moretti, Secretary for Foreign Trade and Economic Affairs of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, representing Minister Ernesto Araújo. Mr. Kampur Vanat Kamat, President of the New Bank of Development, NDB of the BRICS, Mr. Gustavo Montezano, President of BNDS, Minister Roberto Goidanich, President of the Alexandre Guzman Institute. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure for us here in the, insti in the Rio Branco Institute to welcome this important seminar of cooperation, of strategic cooperation between NDB and Brazil for, for, for sustainable development. Rio Branco Institute, as you may know, is an institution that is academic for the training of our diplomats with renowned excellency and welcoming you here in this seminar is a major honor to us. I wish you all very fruitful discussion during this morning session. So once again, be welcome. I give the floor to Minister Guedanishi to follow on with our morning session. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Estela, our host, Minister Paulo Guedes, Norberto Moretti, Secretary for Foreign Trade of our Ministry of Foreign Affairs, representing our minister, Ambassador Ernesto Araújo. He would like to be here, but he was summoned to a, an urgent meeting with our president, Minister, Mr. Kandapur Vaman Kamat, the president of NDB, of the BRICS Bank, Mr. Gustavo Montesano, president of BNDS, other authorities, secretaries, vice presidents of NDB, Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor for the Alexandre Guzman Foundation to co-sponsor and co-organize this event together with the Secretariat of Ambassador Norberto Moretti. I'd like to acknowledge Minister Heno, who invited us to participate in the organization of this relevant event. The presence of Minister Guedes shows the importance that Brazil gives or confers to NDB. So I would like to give the floor to Mr. Kundapur Vaman Kamath, the president of the New Development Bank of BRICS. You have the floor. Good morning. Thank you for uh, the invitation, uh, Excellencies. Uh, I'm uh, delighted to uh, to join you uh, here today and uh, share our progress uh, with you and uh, share some thoughts on uh, how uh, uh, we uh, look at uh, doing uh, a business uh, in Brazil uh, in, uh, I would say, in an enhanced mode than what we might have been doing in the past. Uh, I do this in the background of, uh, in the backdrop of uh, not only the, the summit, uh, uh, BRICS Business Council meeting that I have just attended, but also uh, uh, our um, setting up of uh, the America's regional office as our face to this region in uh, Sao Paulo with uh, a sub-office in uh, Brasilia. While uh, formal approvals for uh, this office, I believe, are uh, uh, getting uh, uh, organized and should be done in the, the next few weeks, uh, I'm happy to say that uh, we already recruited the key uh, people, and uh, I have 
Claudia, my colleague, uh, sitting there who uh, has been with us for a few weeks. And uh, I can say that we already feel the difference in th having somebody on the ground in Brazil. A little more than five years ago, the finance ministers of the BRICS countries uh, met in uh, Fortaleza during the sixth BRICS summit and signed the agreement on the foundation of the bank. And the bank has uh, progressed uh, far in those, uh, five, in those five years. Uh, I think if I look at uh, three things that are required uh, to make an institution sound, uh, they are uh, capital. They are capital in terms of uh, financial capital, human capital, and capital in the context of a strong pipeline which uh, we can work on. I think on all three, on all three fronts, our uh, founding parents have been uh, you know, uh, have given us a great helping hand. Capital has come in on time with uh, at least two members at any point of time paying in the capital ahead of schedule. So we, already, we always have a little bit of the capital ahead of schedule. In the first seven years, the entire 10 billion of capital will have been uh, paid in. The second is people. In terms of people, we are uh, trying to build an organization which draws on the human talent of all our five member countries. And I want to uh, assure everybody that uh, in doing this, we are working on the basis that we need to have equilibrium in the talent flow from uh, our member countries. I'm saying this because it's particularly important that we achieve this uh, balance, because only then can we mold ourselves into uh, the bank that uh, our founding fathers wished us to be. Initially, um, we had uh, fewer applicants from Brazil, uh, but uh, of course we will continue to persist. Uh, the numbers, is, numbers are now uh, growing, and uh, now I think with word of mouth spreading, it is easier for, uh, uh, you know, for us, for the bank, to attract, uh, att to attract new Brazilian talent into, uh, into Shanghai, as it were, and into the bank. Shanghai has been a good home for all the employees, and I'm sure my Brazilian colleagues will also share the same view. So the second capital is human capital. The third uh, item, which is critical, and I also call it a capital, is the ability to uh, source projects and lend to projects. Now, in the first two years or three years, uh, we found that there was an imbalance in uh, the way we went about sourcing our uh, projects. The in imbalance was, in a way, heightened by the fact that we did predominantly government projects. We were yet to do private sector projects. And when we did government projects, uh, we find uh, that a China or an India prepares projects in a completely different way. They talk to uh, the, the province or uh, whichever agency is proposing a project, they meaning the central government. The Ministry of Finance then puts these projects together and then in a way distributes these projects amongst uh, whether it's the World Bank, the NDB, the ADB, or any other uh, institution. So there is a steady pipeline of uh, projects that come from uh, uh, particularly these two members. I think our other three members had uh, their own uh, way in which projects had to be generated. And we all know that in Brazil, uh, we need to work with the municipalities, we need to work with the provincial governments, and then get the COFIEX approval and then do projects. I think that took us a little time to uh, learn, but I think we have, uh, in the course of three years, learned the process. With our office here, that should, uh, be, that should be providing us a good lead into how do we get a project pipeline from, uh, uh, you know, uh, from, from uh, this our host country today. Uh, also, very interestingly, uh, we are now ready with our private sector portfolio. And in that context, I find uh, probably Brazil offers the best opportunity because there is a strong pipeline of PPI uh, projects which are now uh, being uh, put or brought to market, as it were, by the government. B, I think there is, there is also a whole host of uh, projects which are either brownfield or greenfield, which are being set up by uh, uh, various uh, private sector enterprises, maybe by themselves or in partnership with the uh, you know, uh, promoters from uh, uh, other countries, particularly what is of interest to us is those projects from BRICS countries. The third part which I find uh, very exciting is there is a well-established, I would say, private equity environment or uh, infrastructure in uh, Brazil. And that is allowing us to, will provide us opportunities to leverage that relationship 
into these uh, projects that I was uh, mentioning. So I would, I would believe that in Brazil, we will probably have a larger uh, private sector portfolio than a public sector portfolio. Though, uh, clearly, we will work on those portfolios, uh, the public sector portfolio, equally hard. Uh, as far as opportunity is concerned, I don't see any challenge in terms of uh, opportunity in Brazil. The opportunity is vast, and we will work to seize these uh, opportunities. I want to make uh, two more uh, points. One is about the initiative that the bank has taken to use local currency in our funding operations. Now, again, the question uh, arises, why do we need to look at local currency? Again, this is the choice that uh, we, you know, put on the table to our uh, member countries. They decide whether they want to use a hard currency like dollar, increasingly some countries want euro, or do they want local currencies? So for example, China has uh, made it, uh, I would think, uh, clear that they would be very happy with local currency. So incrementally, our lending in China is in local currency. So we borrow renminbi in the local market and lend renminbi in the to our clients. We are very happy to do dollars, but this is what the client wants. Interestingly, South Africa also now, as of today, probably 40% of the loans we have done in South Africa are in, uh, are in uh, local currency. And I think the trend will increase uh, in that country, as also I would expect that in our other member countries, whether it is uh, Russia, India, or indeed Brazil, I'm sure there will be uh, opportunities to work with the local currency as we go along purely as a hedging mechanism, and might be for a certain strategic uh, uh, considerations. I was the BRICS Business Council in the morning, and uh, uh, someone asked me a question, uh, will you be happy to lend in a currency of a member country into another country? And I said that uh, we've already done that. And uh, very interestingly, the, the first loan that we have done in this manner, using partly a member country currency to lend uh, into the third country, is in Brazil. We are just uh, taking a pr project to the uh, board where uh, the Brazilian borrower is borrowing partly in renminbi and partly in dollars. So I think that uh, there are a whole lot of interesting opportunities that will arise that our members will seek in terms of uh, uh, doing business, in terms of uh, you know, how they could go about uh, setting up a relationship with the, with the bank. I think in terms of... Uh, uh, two other things that I want to talk about. Uh, we will end this year with around uh, lending of around 15 billion, and uh, we want to end next year. And these are probably some advanced targets I'm setting my colleagues. We want to end next year with the uh, loan approvals of around 25 billion. So another 8 to 10 billion of uh, lending in the coming year. And uh, that would mean, again, we have very clearly said we want to be in equilibrium in all our member countries. And I very sincerely believe in this equilibrium because we are a bank which has been set up due to the efforts of our five member countries. And I think uh, it is only fair that we lend also in a manner that is uh, in equilibrium. Staffing will be in equilibrium, lending will be in equilibrium. As I started out by saying in uh, Brazil we had to go through a learning curve. I think we are on top of that learning curve now. But the benefit of that is uh, my colleague, uh, Claudia will have a, a good runway, as it were, to uh, put up projects. So uh, I, uh, in the presence of the minister, I set uh, a target to uh, Claudia. I said uh, we are looking at an incremental two and a half billion next year. And uh, if uh, she can run a little faster, we have space for uh, some more. And I think I'm giving an opening here in presence of everybody that uh, we are committed and uh, we will drive our team to achieve things. What do I expect uh, from uh, my host here today? Nothing but your support, your good wishes, and your goodwill. Because I think uh, that drives us, uh, drives us forward. And uh, it, we have always had that, and I'm sure we will continue to have that as uh, we drive to see uh, a nice round figure next year. And uh, my target for that number is, uh, if I were to put the total number, I said incremental number I gave, the total number that I want to see for Brazil is between four and five billion. We have capacity of up to five, but I'm setting you a target, a slightly flexible target of two and a half to, uh, uh, to uh, four, and a, four to five. So let's, let's see how we can strive to do it. And uh, Minister, I always found that when I have set these targets, sitting in the presence of uh, uh, you know, government leaders, 
and other leaders that uh, the team goes out and achieves these targets. So I could not miss this opportunity to put this target on uh, the back of our uh, team. And of course, we will be there to support you and drive uh, you know, achievement of these numbers. Thank you, uh, thank you very much again for uh, your patience, for your courtesy, and uh, for, having us and my, for having me and my team here today. Thank you indeed. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Before uh, I give the floor to the president of BNDS, I'd like to acknowledge the attendance of president of APEX, Admiral Segovia, and other um, members of our government, Special Secretary Marcus Troiva, and others who are um, attending through the internet as it's being broadcast. Now I give the floor to Mr. Gustavo Montesano.